project that I've been working on lately. In a way, it's a book to explore ways how to make a book. And this book collects documentation and ideas and software and graphic design and experiments made with free software between uh, 2008 and 2016. So here are some images from what has yet printed. And along this material, there are um, inspirational writings on different aspects of not moving <laughs> on different aspects of digital culture, which um, were generously made available by the authors under copyleft licenses, and so um, I could include them in the in the book. So far for the images. Unfortunately, it is not completely finished right now. So the book is um, currently called um, "How I Learned to Stop and Love the Draft." Setup for this project is connected to an ongoing attempt, which is to find a personal approach to that. I take the. The setup for this project is connected to an ongoing attempt, which is to find a personal approach to do layout. Um, this in the sense of developing a practice that also may include the questioning of the current status quo from and within digital publishing. There were some references, or I better call them preferences, I had in mind when starting this. One of them is uh, definitely HTML which was for me like the um, first exposure to the possibilities to write code to create visual form, something I've been excited about since then actually and this has been some years. But I wanted something that's a little bit different to read and write where I'm still finding out what this means exactly. And it should work for print. About two years ago I wrote a little Etherpad to PDF utility for um, a workshop in Linz with Servus, which was basically a more or less standard Pandoc procedure. And to not completely skip this, also I will not go uh, deep into technical details um, from the Pandoc MAN page. Pandoc is a Haskell library for converting from one markup format to another and a command line tool that uses this library. Okay, then back in my presentation. It became clear that this combination and use of Pandoc was going, for me, general in the right direction. This means a lightweight markup language that is easy to read and edit in its raw form. And in the next step, this markup will be translated to a more complex markup languages, as for example, LaTeX. And for this second markup language, there should be available a wide range of tools, and therefore it was like a prerequisite that it's um, a widespread and not too exotic, the second markup language. But I had the ambition for a little more complexity than what seemed possible with standard markdown. One thing, for example, I was really missing when using markdown was the possibility to have comments. Comments are more or less standard for all kinds of source code, except Markdown. This means you may have some kind of information written within the text which is not part of the actual output. Normally I use comments to describe something or to remember something or to disable parts with, without deleting them. Unfortunately, Markdown has no standard comments as far as I know, so I decided to add this possibility to have comments just as some plugged on functionality. This meant, instead of processing the markdown source directly, in my case, sending to Pandoc, all lines starting with a presented sign, which, was, um, which I chose as a comment character, um, have to be removed first. So it's actually just adding um, one line of uh, code in this uh, whole setup. Um, this little hack also gave me a first idea about how things might work. 
motivated by the simplicity of the common of the comment option, I had the idea to pick up an original idea of markup, which is described on Wikipedia as the term markup is derived from the traditional publishing practice of marking up a manuscript, which involves adding handwritten annotations in the form of conventional symbolic printers instructions in the margins and text of a paper manuscript or printed proof. For centuries, this task was done primarily by skilled typographers known as markup men or copy markers, who marked up text to indicate what typeface, style and size should be applied to each part and then pass the manuscript to others for typesetting their hand. This is an example of such um, a marked up uh, printed proof. And so if you would like to describe it shorter, it would be instruction describing the form of the content are written along the content as comments. And um, so my idea is directly derived, der derived from this. Um, as I was not planning to pass the manuscript to others for typesetting by hand, I had to deal with the question, how will these uh, additional instruction be understood and handled? Then, a rough translation of what is happening. The basic translation from Markdown to LaTeX is provided by Pandoc. The translation of the instruction needs to be handled separately. I decided to do this by creating a dictionary where you could look up the instructions. Important, the vocabulary is not final. The dictionary is never finished. It may be extended by adding new instructions to the dictionary just as needed. Instructions that don't exist in the dictionary will be ignored. Most instructions were not developed in advance, but written right when they were needed. This is an example from the conversations book we did uh, last year. And some of these instructions made more sense and were used quite often. Others were too specific or unflexible and just disappeared after a while. So that's what uh, it produces the output. We had in the audio transcription um, just the uh, um, to note what was happening in the background and we thought it would be nice to actually um, include this and then needed to find like a typographic solution how to do this and that's what the meanwhile uh, uh, instruction produced. Some more examples, for example, uh, the graphic comment was quite, quite needed to include images within the text. This example is from another book where we, or I, um, um, had the uh, needed opportunity to include page spreads, so um, uh, images that um, take over two pages. Here you can see it's um, one, two, three, so the double page spread is one before, clear to write. It's something I will come back later and include um, just um, uh, reference as a different source. This is a list of instructions um, made until today. Some have more telling name, that's the ideal case. Some of them are more cryptic. Um, okay, i try to sum it up shortly. Different dictionaries allow different translation. In the beginning, the dictionaries were intended to extend and change the vocabulary on the fly. But it proved quite practical to support different output formats. Different dictionaries define instructions according to the requirements of the output format. Some instructions should produce a similar effect although they may happen different uh, things in the background. For example, we have like, um, one is the um, thing that is described in the dictionary for um, HTML when the graphic instruction um, appears, um, the other one is for a PDF output. Other instructions were created with quite, quite specific output in mind. A very targeted behavior, for example, is everything related to pages. Because, for example, with uh, the clear to write instruction, there are no and left right pages in HTML. When defining the dictionary for HTML output, uh, the clear to write instruction, which pushes the content to the next right page when making a book, could be either ignored or I can think about the wanted effect of clear to write and try to find an equivalent, for example, insert vertical space. And again, the dictionary may be changed or extended while writing. So it could be either vertical space or something else that uh, is more um, a pattern at this moment. 
So shared source code uh, translated according to different dictionaries leading to different output. Shared source code means uh, that sources can and are shared for different output in parts, but not necessarily as a whole. Core functionality and prerequisite for the shared source approach is to include instruction which, as it says, allows to include parts of a source file, local and remote, based on line numbers. This allows to store a resource once, yet distributing it for use in multiple documents, which is quite an old idea for, um, for hypertext, for example, but um, um, has been or is missing in um, a lot of environments today. Problems? I will hurry up a bit. Uh, to include by line numbers is actually a big potential problem because it presumes that the source does not change. Uh, this is not so nice and close to impossible to ensure within collaborative settings, but there's something like a happy accident, at least something that was not planned from the beginning, but seems more and more crucial to make the whole setup work. Since using mostly remote sources from Etherpad and Git, uh, it really makes no difference if I refer to a file or to a file as it was in a specific moment. Um, and this can be mixed, there should be like a, a slide of um, all the complicated connections within referencing um, to uh, versions in time and um, the latest state has not yet been met, made. Um, so that's the, um, the source for the um, uh, images you have seen before. It's distributed across the network and um, frozen in time to this uh, references to versions. Um, from making a bookmaking workflow, I came in more and more towards imagining a source format, which is in a way disconnected from exactly how it will be processed. I've written everything as best scripts, but there may be better um, solutions or just um, for different tastes, different solutions. Um, I skipped these. Two examples, which were developed. One is um, 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 utility to convert from LibreOffice to my custom markdown format. The other one was like a visual um, approach to select uh, huge collections of posters and um, derive source code from this. So um, it's an interface based on hot glue made for the very specific task to sort and select posters from a huge collection. While it is a visual approach, it is not with the wig. From the visual selection, source code is generated, which is defined by the relations created visually. Within both approaches, plain text still plays a central role, but it's not so much for editing as an intermediate format. How much time? One minute? No, it can slow down. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I'm coming back to my title and I will try to add some explanation. Instead of searching or even programming the one killer application, my biggest interest at the moment is the possibility to move through and create layers of different complexities. And that's the thing I've learned while using GNU's born-again shell. Thank you. <laughs>